Canada's Premier Racing Series is set to close out the 2017 season. Today, we'll crown a champion at a rejuvenated and renovated crown jewel. This is the NASCAR Pinty Series on TSN. The nation has at times witnessed an intense, dramatic, and competitively fueled NASCAR Pinty season as the country's finest have battled on short tracks and road courses from coast to coast. Tonight, 24-year-old Alex LeBay puts the finishing touches on a near-perfect NASCAR season as he and his go-fast team collect their first Pinty Series championship. Big money, pride, and the chance to hoist the winner's hardware one last time all happens here at Jucasa Motor Speedway. The old crown jewel that has had one heck of a facelift. She's fast and spectacular. We're in Nell's Corners, Ontario, as TSN brings you the Pinty's Fall Brawl, hosted by Jucasa Motor Speedway. It's the 13th and final race of the 2017 NASCAR Pinty Series, and what a place to end the year. Hello and welcome to NASCAR Racing on TSN. I'm Dave Bradley, along with me is Adam Ross. Both Todd Lewis and Clinton Jeffrey will be patrolling the pits for us here tonight. Adam, we have lots to talk about. We crowned a champion tonight, but let's talk about this place. Dave, Kenny Hill and Jerry Montour bought the old Cayuga Speedway in 2016. They brought in Alex Nagy to oversee the renovation. They've spent $7 million upgrading the facility. Brand new state-of-the-art LED Musco lighting, a fresh infield with the proper drainage and a beautiful racetrack. Everywhere you look, you get the feeling that everything has been done right. And with more on the actual track itself, let's check in with Clinton. When Cayuga Speedway became Jacasa Motor Speedway, the new owners were very respectful of the roots that were laid down here by Bob Slack and his family in 1966. The track sits in its original footprint, but now boasts a surface that is 60 feet wide with four degrees of banking on the straightaways and nine degrees of banking here on the turn. The Slack family should be very proud of what new owners Ken Hill and Jerry Montour have done with the crown jewel. Thanks, Clinton. And Adam, it's been an exciting 18 months to get to this point, but the Jucasa folks aren't done yet. They're planning on adding a road course. They're going to host some concerts, upgrade the grandstands as well. They've got huge plans, Dave, and the community is so excited to see the Speedway back in action. And every late model racer within 300 miles wants to come and race here. Well, of course, as we mentioned, this race marks the end of the 2017 season for the NASCAR Pinty Series, but it's been an enjoyable four-month ride to get to this point. Let's look at the journey so far. The 2017 NASCAR Pinty Series consists of 13 races beginning in May and rolling through to the end of September. The racers open the season with a unique challenge, rain at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. But this event quickly turned into a duel between Kevin Lacroix and Andrew Ranger, both trading the top spot before Lacroix edged ahead and captured the win. Race number two at Delaware Speedway saw the red and white 74 out in front in the early going. But he'd fade with the 32 of Alex LeBay flexing his muscle for the first time in the new season, sealing victory. Autodrome Chaudière marked this series' first stop of the season in La Belle Province as the tight bull ring outside of Quebec City always produces an incredible show. After battling side by side with LeBay as laps ticked down, Caden Lapsevich would become the third winner in as many races. It was back to the road courses with a stop at Circuit Icar outside of Montreal. A new look configuration produced aggressive battles, and in the end, Lacroix would keep his road course win streak going, taking win number two in the season. Carving a street circuit in downtown Toronto brings the fans close to the action, and they were treated to a show. First, it was contact between Ranger and Tagliani. Then Mark Antoine Cameron was going for it. In the end, Lacroix was too much. He posted back-to-back -back wins. Back to the Ovals for the first stop on the Western Swing. Alex LeBay in the 32 needed a win to boost his position in the points. He did exactly that, holding off all challengers in race number one in Saskatoon. In the second event of the same evening, young Caden Lapsovich still looking to repeat a series champion at a tight battle with veteran DJ Kennington, sliding past in the closing laps and onto the top step of the podium. The series would make the drive further out west, stopping in Edmonton, Alberta. After 300 hard-fought laps on a tight quarter-mile speed plan, it was once again the 32 of LeBay who picked up the win, his third on the season. The Grand Prix de Trois-Rivières is a historic race and one that brings the fans out in droves. 
Lacroix was a favorite in this race, but never count out a Hall of Famer. Alex Tagliani powered home for his first win of 2017. Riverside Speedway is a jewel on the East Coast, and the high banks never disappoint. But the fireworks in this one happened after the finish. LeVay took the win, but Lacroix wasn't happy. A penalty to Lacroix meant he needed a win at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park in race number 11. He heard the message and delivered. In his own time zone all weekend, the 74 secured his fourth win of the season and edged back into the points chase. Autodrome St. Estache hosted the second last event on the calendar. Lacroix came out of the gate to win the pole, lead the first 50 laps as well. But from there, it was all Alex LeBay who stormed to the lead, almost lapping the entire field. It was the fifth win for the Go Fast Racing Camp, which solidifies the 2017 championship. Looking at the points after those 12 races, Alex LeBay continues to lead. Really, all he has to do is take the green flag here today to clinch the 2017 NASCAR Pinty Series Championship. You look back to seven, or second spot, you have Kevin Lacroix, who led off and on over the course of the season. He just has to have a pretty solid race here today to pretty much wrap up that spot, but third on back is where it gets interesting. Yeah, first and second are pretty much locked in, but Caden Lapsevich sits third in points. DJ Cannington and LP Dumlin both have a great shot at battling for that position, and maybe most importantly, any of those drivers would like to finish the season strong with a win. Down in ninth spot is the number nine of Adam Martin in the Johnsonville Ford. Now he comes into this race essentially having locked up the Justin's Rookie of the Year award as well. And I think Adam will be the first to tell you 2017 was not the season they had hoped to have. They did win Johnson's Rookie of the Year, but they hoped for better results. You know they got in their heads they want to come out in 2018 and run even stronger. And a strong race tonight would be a great way to lead into that offseason. Well, it's been a busy short time leading up to this race for the GoFast Racing crew, working out of their shop in Hamilton, which is just around the corner here. They've had a lot to do working on their race cars, plus Alex LeBay had sponsorship commitments in Texas. And that's where a crew chief like Mario Goslin, the veteran, the champion that he is, is able to keep things running on all cylinders, keep things organized. That's a championship organization. Dave Jacobs, Alex LeBay, Mario Goslin, all the way down to everyone who works in the shop, everyone who works at the track. It's a transfer of power though tonight as the youngest ever NASCAR Canada champion Caden Lapsevich hands over the trophy to the champion in waiting who's standing by with our Todd Lewis. Todd? Thanks guys. We have seen it year after year in the NASCAR Pinty Series. Consistency wins championship. And this season, this number 32 Can-Am team has been the model of consistency. Whether it's on ovals or road courses, Alex LeBay has been the one to beat. On ovals, he's hammered his way home through five victories. In the other seven events, he's been in top five of six of those seven events. His worst finish of the season was in sixth place. The 24-year-old from Victoriaville, Quebec, is set to claim his championship. And Alex LeBay, each week, week has gone after it. Alex LeBay, I suspect that the plan is the same again this week. Go for another victory, perhaps number six on the season. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we, uh, we're we in pretty good shape here. We just got a, a start uh, the race, basically. So we're, I think we're going to go hard for another win. We are to get a win number six. And uh, again, we got a really good Can-Am car here tonight. We're really fast in practice and qualifying. Just got loose a bit in corner one, uh, um, two laps, but I think we got a lot of speed in the, in the 32 car. You had a good test at this track. You ran the late model race a month ago. What have you learned and what do you like about this track? Oh, I mean, it's, fast. it's a fast track. It's, just, it's pretty obvious. And uh, I mean, it's a lot of momentum. So you really got to be uh, really concentrated and keep your moment, momentum going. It's, it's easy to, to lose a couple tenths a lap because, uh, like I'm saying, it's a lot of momentum. And you got to be back on the gas pretty early. So it's uh, oh, it's going it's to be fun. I got a, a lot of good cars around me. So it should be uh, pretty interesting here tonight. Enjoy it. <laughs> Alex LeBay will roll off second on the outside of row number one. When we return to Jacasa Speedway, we'll drop the green and get it started. This NASCAR on TSN telecast from Jucasa Motor Speedway is brought to you by Mopar. We built it. We know it. By Pinty's, making great food fun. By Silverwax, a premium Canadian car care product and buying Bennett golf cars and utility vehicles.
Adam, ever since this race was announced on the Pinty Series calendar, we've been looking forward to it, but it appears as though the fans have been as well. A great crowd turn up for this one. Fantastic crowd for this late September show. You wouldn't know it's late September by the weather. It's a beautiful night for racing, and we're about set to get things rolling. Our defending champion walks away from the crown tonight, lends it over to this man right here. And, and it, the big difference between other tracks and Jocasta Motor Speedway, look at the lighting here. As the sun goes down, you'll really see it. Let's go down for the command. Drivers, start your engines. Shannon and Glenn Baker giving the command to start engines as all of these motors fire up on the front straightaway. Great looking field of cars. Dave, the difference between broad daylight and this, there's no glare. There's no glare from the sun. The lighting is perfect. Look at that view out the windshield of Armani Williams number 28 race for autism machine. And you heard Todd talking about the late model race last month here. That was run in daylight. So this is the very first time we've seen race cars on this track at night. Donald Chisholm made the long tow from Antigonish, Nova Scotia to do double duty tonight, this race and the late model race before this one. And a pretty solid run in that late model race as the field starts to roll off. We'll take a look at the Leland starting lineup. You have DJ Kennington starting on pole, Alex LeBay outside of him. Row number two has Donald Teach in the 22 and Caden Lapsovich in the 76. Back to the third row, Alex Tagliani in the 18 and there's Donald Chisholm in the 89. Row number four, Andrew Ranger in the 27, and Anthony Simone in the 95. Peaking back to row number five, you have Kevin Lacroix in the 74, Trevor Monaghan making an oval track start in the number four. Row number six, there's Larry Jackson in the number 25, Noel Dowler making a haul from Alberta. Row seven, starting 13th is Armani Williams in the 28, and Brandon White from Conewake, Quebec in the 99. Adam Martin in the nine, alongside his teammate, Mark Dilley in the 0-2. Row number nine has J.F. Dumoulin in the 04. Brad Graham, welcome back to the NASCAR Pinty Series in the 56. And then rounding out the field, Martin Cote in the 11, and L.P. Dumoulin will start scratch in the 47. And for our E3 Spark Plugs race analysis, 200 laps is the distance tonight. The pole winner, just like he did in the inaugural NASCAR Pinty Series race in 2007, D.J. Kennington going to lead them to the green. And before we go to green tonight, let's check in one more time with Todd Lewis. Todd? Guys, a lot of talk about the championship, of course, and Kevin Lacroix trying to solidify his runner-up spot. He'll do that under the guidance of crew chief Don Thompson, Jr. Kevin Lacroix looking for his first oval track victory. Don Thompson, a winner at the first ever NASCAR Pinty Series event at this track in 2007. As we get set to roll here, one driver who will be up on the wheel is Brad Graham. Has not raced here in many years, and back in 2001, he had a catastrophic fire when a problem arose with his fuel cell. We'll keep your eye on the 56 tonight as Brad gets it done here back at Jucasa. I remember that event back in 2001. Great to see Brad Graham back in the field here today. Took his time getting up to speed in practice, but he'll be there come race time. We're about to go green once again under the lights at Jucasa. DJ Kennington on the pole, Alex LeBay on the outside. Just by crossing the line, he becomes the series champion. Jay Summers from Dunville waves the green flag, and we're underway in the Pinty's Ball Brawl at Jucasa Motor Speedway. Some sparks out of the 32 of Alex LeBay, the Can-Am Kappa Ford Fusion. Might just be some tire pressures early in the race. Yeah, they'll start the race with low air pressures. That can lead to things bottoming out they might not expect. Let's have a look back if we stay on this through the corner. Yeah, and you can see the sparks flying off the right side of that race car. Donald Teach will see that as well out of the windshield of the 22, but he's got company. Here comes Caden Lapsovich to the inside, the 76. They touch. Lapsovich drove the late model race last month. Twin 75 lap feature events. He's got a lot of laps on this racetrack. He really likes the layout. Sparks getting heavier even out of the number 32 of Alex LeBay. Remember, he is your champion by virtue of taking the green flag. But though that issue doesn't seem to be going away. No, not yet. We'll definitely keep an eye on that as we ride on board with Caden Lapsovich. Trying to track down Donald Teague. You can see in the distance, Kennington opening a gap on the rest of the
to the field. There is the low Zeppi pen dodge. The 18 of Alex Tagliani able to catch this group. So now it's a four car battle for second spot. On a track like this where you really maintain your speed, you've got to be smooth, a lot of finesse. I expect Tagliani to be fast. Teach to the inside for second spot. The 22 ducks underneath the 32. So move the man from Washitel, Quebec, up to second spot now. Teach edges ahead of LeBay. LeBay hanging tight on the outside. What a view of 76 laps of it on the inside. Looks like LeBay just sort of hanging on. He's wrestling that machine in the early going. Not like we've seen him all season long. He's been so smooth, so confident behind the wheel of that 32. Well, you get up out of that inside groove, that's a different racetrack. On, on a short quarter mile track, the outside groove, you're still about a quarter mile around. On this big Cayuga Speedway, the, the arc of the corner is a lot different when you get up on the high side. And because it's all brand new asphalt, you have traction down on the inside groove. So once you get up on the outside, it's difficult to keep that momentum. This is a battle for seventh spot. The 89 of Donald Chisholm, the 27 of Andrew Ranger, and the old gaggle of cars in behind as well, including the 95 from Anthony Simone. Yeah, and the rest of the field. <laughs> that <laughs> is a much. big group of race cars. One slip off the bottom, you're going to lose a handful of spots as we ride on board the driver from Alberta, Noel Dowler. Rick Crawford, the veteran of the NASCAR Truck Series from Mobile, Alabama, back on top of the pit box as a crew chief for that team again this weekend. A calming voice on the radio as Noel Dowler gets around Larry Jackson for the 11th spot. You're right, Noel Dowler, a very different driver with Rick Crawford talking in his ear. You can see him calm down and work himself into a rhythm. It looks like he's trying to do that here in the early going. Back at the front, though, battle heating up for third spot. And the battle heating up for the lead. Donald D just closing in on DJ Kennington. As we look forward from the 18 of Alex Tagliani, you see the top four starting to scrunch together here at Jucasa Motor Speedway. The crew's looking on on pit side. DJ Kennington is your leader in the early going. Welcome back to NASCAR Pinty Series Racing on TSN. We're at Jucasa Motor Speedway for race number 13 in the season finale on the 2017 season. Have a look at the front brake rotors on the 22 of Donald Teach, glowing red. It's not unusual on an oval track, but it surprises me this early in the race. Might be riding that brake pedal a little bit, Dave. And you would think this track, being a 5 eighths of a mile oval, it's one of the bigger tracks in the NASCAR Pinty Series this season. Behind you. Doesn't seem to be affecting Teach too much as he squeezes into the lead underneath the Castrol Edge Dodge of DJ Kennington. Well, it's a way to settle the nose of the car down. Listen to this engine. That's a long straight of a hero. Slowly it builds up the RPMs. They got to gear it, so it's at its peak at the end of these long straight of behind him. Nobody behind First and second in points. Side-by-side for a little bit. It's for fifth on the racetrack. Kevin Lacroix on the bumper-to-bumper. -bumper. Number 74 goes through. The Can-Am Ford Fusion of Alex LeBay seems to be falling back. It's pretty early in the race, but a yellow flag comes out. It wouldn't surprise me to see the 32 head to pit road get an adjustment on that race car. And realistically, he's got no pressure here. He doesn't have to do anything huge to get the championship. He's already got that, so he can just essentially ride around if he wants to. Well, the nice thing for them is they can race the way they've raced all season long, go out and try to win. There is no risk of losing that championship like you say, Dave. Good run being put in by the Lowe's EpiPen, number 18 of Alex Tagliani. Remember how badly he struggled in St. Estache, Quebec. It's good to see that crew turn things around here at Jucasa Motor Speedway. The top six or seven cars all strung out, a car length or two between all of them, feeling things out. As I say that, of course, Kevin Lacroix to the inside of Caden Lapsovich. Battle for fourth spot, and Lacroix will take it over. Lapsovich sliding back after starting fairly aggressively in the early going. We ride on board with your defending series champion, now to be your outgoing series champion of the NASCAR Pinty Series. Much 
much different sound from the different cameras. The sound inside the car, a lot different from what you get from underneath the car at the back end is DJ Kennington feeling all sorts of pressure from Tagliani. Kennington a veteran, but he has not won in 50 races. His last win coming back in 2013, and there's the veteran move. Pull up into the group. He knows Tagliani is quicker right now. Kennington will go get him later. Alex LeBay on a bit of a surge. Either that or Keaton Lapsovich falling back. Donald Chisholm, wow! Lapsovich slides down between LeBay and Donald Chisholm. Look at the Bob Slack sticker on the, on the dashboard of Caden Lazarus. Class move by the Lapsovich family, who always brought a throng of supporters to the races at Keuka Speedway. Yeah, because for those who don't know, the Bob Slack name is a significant one in this area. Well, Bob Slack passed away this spring. He built Cayuga Speedway into what, what it was. He didn't start the Speedway. He didn't build it from the ground up, but he created it into, into the mecca for car racing in Canada. It really has been. It's hosted uh, ASA races, uh, Bush North Series races in the past. Dale Earnhardt has turned some laps at the old Cayuga Speedway, and now we start a new page of history here with Jucasa Motor Speedway. And what a great center of speed it is, because look at the tight battles you have on the racetrack. You know, it's funny, in a lot of the conversations we've had about the racetrack, people are trying to find something they might have missed. There's nothing. <laughs> they haven't missed any. The way the track is laid out, pit road, it is beautiful, it is smooth, it is racy, and it's well lit. Yeah, it really is. And as we mentioned off the top, they're not done here. There will be more improvements to come in the future. Looks like Tagliani, a little wiggle out of the 18, and DJ Kennington now with a run in the Castro Edge Dodge. Well, like LeBay said, if you, if you overdrive a little bit, it's going to cost you a couple of tenths of a second. Now we see Tagliani defending that inside because he saw the run Kennington had. You defend the inside, you're gonna slide up the racetrack. You can go in on the bottom, it's hard to come off on the bottom, right? You, you really need to balance the corners. Watch DJ Kennington if we stay with this shot. Go in, hit the line on the bottom, don't overdrive it, and the car will stick right to the bottom of the racetrack. And it did exactly that. Not really surprised to see the 74 of Lacroix as strong as he is here. And another good battle deeper in the field, the 76 and the 89, Lapsovich and the Celtic Ford of Donald Chisholm. Battle for six spot. This is a track that Donald Chisholm is good at. Not surprised to see him this far up in the top 10. Just like Riverside Speedway, a track with a lot of speed, and this track means a lot to him. Donald Chisholm's father, John Chisholm, used to tow all the way from Nova Scotia to race at Cayuga Speedway. Donald wanted to be here for this event to race in the memory of his father, John. For sure, and he wants to put on a good show. He's doing exactly that. So is the 74. Up to fourth spot now, as he managed to get around the 17 of DJ Kennington. You heard the spotters talking them through that. This is a big-time momentum track. You want to know if it's clear in behind and you can sort of fall back into line and not mess up another lap of momentum. No, and if you make a mistake here, it could wind up being very costly. What a great battle, Trevor Monaghan and the Avant Insulation number four. He's got the ninth position, but he's holding on over Noel Dowler, Brandon White, Brad Graham's back there, Anthony Simone as well. I'll tell you, Trevor Monaghan, there's a small deckle on the back of this car for, for Anya. Anya's a young lady at McMaster Children's Hospital who's going through treatments for leukemia. She had surgery last night, Dave. She made it to the races tonight to cheer on Trevor Monaghan. He's got the Care for Mac Kids logo on that race car. And, and I know it was very special for Trevor and his family and Rob McConnell and the whole team to host Anya here tonight. Yeah, Trevor, pretty emotional at the start of this race. As he gets passed by the 99 of Brandon White, but tries to come back. Problems for the 32. That happened just a little while ago as he looks to cut down a tire into turn one. Man, oh man, it didn't look like he hit the wall awfully hard. I don't know how he could have scrubbed off that much speed. Sparks, a little heavier than we saw at the start of the race. Yellow flag is going to wave. This is what Alex LeBay needed. If he stayed green, his race would be pretty much done. He'll find pit lane this time. Let's have another look at what happened. So coming off of turn four, let's listen. I 
right, you don't hear anything really blow out, but you definitely hear the metal drag on the ground. That right front tire is down. We just don't know whether something broke and it went flat before the 32 hit the wall. Crew scrambles over the wall, trying to lift it up and get the jack underneath and then change that right front tire. So that, that's a huge problem when you can't even get the jack underneath. You see them trying to lift the car up. A fast race car is one that's low to the ground. So that jack only just fits under the side of the car. When you have a flat tire, here they're going to bring a pry bar out and get that side of the race car up in the air a little bit. There's just no room to get the jack underneath. And this is all costing moments on the racetrack. We do count green laps, of course, in the NASCAR Pinty Series, or caution laps. And he's gone down a lap already. That's inevitable, but the crew wants to keep him one lap down instead of two, Dave. There's a better view of what happened. There you see the sparks coming off of four. He's just crossed the start-finish line down into one. Big-time sparks, but thankfully scrubbed off a lot of speed, Dave. Pit road is now open. Your leader is Donald Teach, and the 22 is in. Todd? Sign waving in the air for pole sitter DJ Kennington along pit road. Fuel, a handling adjustment on the right rear. The 18 and the 27 pull in here. Quick splash of gas for Andrew Rager. They will check the grill and send him back out, taking a look at the right side, and now he's down and away. A busy pit lane as everybody trying to get the work done needed to get done. The 74 of Kevin Lacroix comes out first, though. The bumper-to-bumper -bumper Dodge is your race leader here at Jucasa Motor Speedway. Welcome back to NASCAR Racing on TSN. It's race 13 of the NASCAR Pinty Series, the Pinty's Fall Brawl season finale. Kevin Lacroix will lead the field back to green here on lap 53. Alex LeBay, 19th spot, one lap down currently, but he is back on track. The free pass this time goes to Brad Graham. He's in the 17th spot. Final car on the lead lap, Dave. Back underway as we head through turn one and two. And this is where it gets dicey, the side-by-side -side racing. Love hearing those NASCAR Binti Series engines, that song down the back straightaway, though. This track is so wide, Dave, they don't come all the way out to the wall on the straightaways. A little bit of contact between Teach in the 22 and his teammate, Alex Tagliani, in the 18. Remember the last time we saw them make contact? Well, the first time this year we saw them make contact on an oval. Well, Delaware Speedway, and it didn't take long to end the race early for the 22 of Donald Teach. And Warren Jones telling his driver, Alex Tagliani, there's a hole behind the 22. So basically, if you let the 22 go right now, you can drop in behind him and maintain that position. And that's exactly what Alex Dagley and he did. This is the view out of his front bumper. Pretty cool shot there. I, I want to hear that engine all the way down a straightaway. I just think it'll be so cool to see it wind out. We see it at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, but they're going through the gears. It's faster there. Here they're all in fourth gear. It's all horsepower. Good shot there of the Mopar Dodge, a 27 of Andrew Ranger. It's been a long time. Oh, we got contact. The 89 of Donald Chisholm and the 18 of Alex Tagliani battling for fourth spot, and Chisholm nearly went around. That was That is a high-speed spot on the racetrack, and now Lapsovich in the 76, making contact with the 18 of Tagliani. But you see how the holes open up here at Jucasa Motor Speedway, and drivers will take advantage all day. You know, we're riding on board there with Andrew Ranger. I understand, knowing that they don't have a shot at the championship this year, he and crew chief Dave White really doing some research and development on things they can work on towards 2018. Well, remember, the 27 of Andrew Ranger hasn't won in 19 races, but he still holds the record of 22 career NASCAR Pinty Series wins. Battle for 10th spot, and look at the weather tech, Doncia number 47 of LP Doomlight. He's the man on the move. He started last in the field. Uh, they broke the engine in practice. In fact, it didn't even fail them. It just wasn't making power, so they put in a backup engine. Billy Burns was happy. They took their time. Shot again. Oh, no, right again front tire gone again. We heard over the radio. Did he and catch the wall? Uh, there's geometry issues. Look at the way that, that wheel is pointing. Yeah, so the tire is definitely down. 
but I don't think he caught the wall up in turn number four, but more problems for your 2017 champion, Alex LeBay in the Can-Am well, Ford Fusion. Another problem is we're not under yellow. No yellow flag has been thrown, so he's coming down pit lane under green. This is not good, and we've got a battle for the lead. Kevin Lacroix on the outside, and it's Donald Teach in the 22. We'll move around him in the Circuit Acura Dodge Challenger. So a new leader in Donald Teach, and Alex LeBay heads down pit lane. Todd? Yeah, the right front is down again, guys. Of course, there seems to be another problem under there. Something in the suspension appears to be broken, whether it's rubbing on the tire or causing it to go flat. But there is another problem underneath there, rather than just the flat tire. Well, we bragged on this race team and Alex LeBay that their worst finish all year long was a sixth place. It's what led them to being champions here tonight. Looks like they've been snake bit. Well, if you're going to have a bad race, then this would be the one to do it. Wait till you clinch the championship and then have the worst race of the season. And look at these crew members. There's absolutely no quit. They keep hustling. Car goes back on the racetrack. He's now four laps down, though, as he'll rejoin the field. Again, no caution, as you've mentioned, on several occasions. And we do have a relatively new race leader, the 22 of Donald Cheech, now starting to open up a little gap on the 74 bumper to bumper dodge of Kevin Lacroix. And a battle for third, Donald Chisholm looking for racing room on the inside of DJ Kennington. And if you're Alex LeBay, how excited are you to be on the racetrack with the right front that continues to fail? Third lap at the open and bring it behind the wall. Let me take a look at it. Car going behind the wall. Alex LeBay with problems that they want to explore. It's a tough position to put your driver in, Dave. Yeah, he's going to know as a driver, a couple laps out on the track, he knows things aren't right, so he pulls down pit lane, and he'll get things fixed. But look at this, battle for seventh. You have Andrew Ranger in the Mopar Dodge. How about Brandon White? He's been fast all day here. Practice, decent qualifying, and now in the race, he's flexing his muscle. He's done great. Alex LeBay is back. He's going behind the wall. This is not good. Yeah, guys, this time they're going to take the time to find out what the problem is. Alex LeBay is behind pit wall, and that right front is off the ground. There is something definitely amiss underneath the right front. The team just hasn't been able to determine exactly what it is yet. See, now they're showing a little patience. They're taking a look around. They want to get it fixed right if they send that 32 back out on the track. But Todd's made his way over to the crew chief who's in that mix. Todd, see if you can pull away Mario Gosselin for a second. Yeah, guys, with crew chief Mario Gosselin, I know you're thankful to have this championship locked up, but what is the problem that with that right front? Well, it looked like we cut, we cut the first right front. I don't know if it was low air pressure or camber. It's hard to tell. It definitely wasn't brake heat. It didn't. It didn't melt the bead. But uh, now we've rubbed the sway bar arm off of it, so there's no bar, so the car lays over, and the sway bar arm is dragging the track, and there's no need. We're, you know, we're going to be 15 laps down. Let's start drinking beer. <laughs> if there's one thing these guys know how to do when they win a championship is celebrate, Dave. And the celebration of the 32 camp tonight, it's going to be something to see. Well, there's still hard racing on the track. A battle for 11th spot, three wide into turn number one. Monaghan grabs a handful of wheel, and he hangs on to the number four. And he barely lifted. Turn hard right, catch the back end, drive away. This man, Adam Martin, had the best view in the house of that. Martin and the Johnsonville Ford Fusion sitting in 15th spot, but they're not done in this dice. You have Anthony Simone in the 95. It's a battle for 11th spot. Larry Jackson in the Pilate number 25 up on the outside. And how about the Spectra Premium 04 of J.F. Dumoulin? J.F. Dumoulin, who had a great run at St. Eustache, and this was a driver I wanted to talk about. Armani Williams looks very comfortable on this racetrack. He's running at the back of this pack, said it reminds him of Toledo Speedway down in Ohio, where he's run a lot of races. Toledo is bad fast, Dave, and the speed does not seem to bother him at all. Your new champion for 2017 out of the car, Todd. Alex, you're just shaking your head in frustration, and I can understand it. This is not the way you wanted this night, Dan. I know for sure. We had a really good car. I don't know what happened there. We were really tight coming and, 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 and starting right. I don't know if we had a right front flat or something, and it ripped the whole bracket, the uh, whole sway bar bracket there. It's a shame. My, all my team bring, bring, like, brought me a really, really fast car. We could have won here tonight, but we're going 
not a silver championship, but it just, it's a shame we got our worst result there at the end of the year while we celebrate for the championship. Thanks, champ. Now remember, Alex LeBay has plans for 2018, plans to run the Xfinity Series down, down south. And there's no end to where this driver can make it in this industry, Dave. A fantastic wheel man, and he understands the race car that's underneath him. It's a devastating combination for the people he's going to be up against down south. Super smooth driver when he's out on the racetrack. But we've got a great battle here between the 27. Oh, we got problems in the 76 of Caden Lapsovich almost up into the wall. Looks like a right front tire on that car, too. You would have to think so. My goodness. Once again, a driver, when you lose a right front at a track like this, it's not if you hit the wall, it's how hard are you going to hit it. We've seen Alex LeBay manage to mostly avoid it, and now we've seen Caden Lapsovich avoid, and oh, that yellow flag is a huge break for the young man from Grimsby. Caden Lapsovich was slowing down the back straightaway, and he had to. He had no right front tire. We'll ride on board with the 76. Oh, so close. Unbelievable bit of driving by Lapsovich, and you can see there is nothing left of that right front. They're going to need to lift the right side of this car as well. Likely, yeah, they do bring a bar over the wall. So they saw the struggles Alex LeBay had in getting the jack underneath the right side. These guys came prepared. The crowd here tonight, Dave, is unbelievable. The people have come in the thousands. And they've been treated to a great race so far. Pit lane, though, is open and is busy. 95 of Anthony Simone here. They will put right sides on this innovative plumbing and mechanical machine right in front of him. You've got Mark Dilley pulling in. They're going to go for his right sides also here. Crew racing as fast as they can to get these cars back out. Everybody making scheduled stops, this time for fresh Goodyear's. The 22 along pit road, happy with the car, no changes, just fresh tires. Same situation on the 74, Kevin Lacroix really happy with his car after that first stop, still happy with it, just time getting fresh tires. Looks like Lacroix might have lost some spots on pit road. We'll be back with more from Jukasa. Welcome back to the NASCAR Pinty Series finale from Jocasa Motor Speedway. I'm Dave Bradley along with Adam Ross, Todd Lewis, and Clinton Jeffrey are trackside today. We're headed back to the green flag here in the Pinty's Fall Brawl with Annie Ganesh, Nova Scotia's Donald Chisholm leading here on lap 90. Dave, we look in the background, it looks like the bottom rows are empty in the grandstands, and they are. The reason there's nobody sitting down there, the banking on the track and the walls are so much higher, you can't see. But in the darkness, the crowd is wedged into the top 15 or so rows. Driver sliding up the racetrack, and it's the 99 of Brandon White. It doesn't look like he cut a tire like two drivers earlier. We've had that problem with LeBay, and we've had it with Lapsovich as well. White just slid up the racetrack, might have got into the marbles in the outside group. He sailed that car into the corner hard. It wouldn't grip. And you know it's the wise thing when you get up out of the groove is to stay up out of the groove, let the people go by, and there's oh, Larry oh. Jackson. Speaking of up out of the groove, Larry Jackson driving in like a dirt car here on this very smooth asphalt. The Pilate number 25 will try to blend back into the field. Great racing further back. Caden Lasovich trying to recover from that flat tire. Look at the traffic in front of him. Trevor Monaghan and the Yvonne Insulation, the number four, chasing this Spectra Premium 04. And there's the Mopar number 27 of Andrew Ranger. Tom from Yvonne Insulation brought people by the bus load. And as we watch the Spectra Premium 04 as well, great sponsors that bring tons of fans to the show. Battle for 18th, or eighth position, I should say, is the 76 of Caden Lapsovich is a lap down currently in 15th. Now, if he stays there, he will be the first car lap down and eligible for the free pass. The ever-important free pass, as we rode on board briefly with LP Dumoulin, still impressed with the drives that he's had this year on the overs. Looking up at the front, though, the 89 of Donald Chisholm getting some heat from the Castrol Edge Dodge of DJ Kennington. This is a battle for third spot now with the 74 of Kevin Lacroix and Donald Teach in the 22. And you can see Kennington at that side of the screen there, edge to the inside of Chisholm. He's going to take the lead. How big of a win would this be for DJ Kennington, a man from St. Thomas, Ontario, not far away from where we are here today. But now he's out in front. This would be huge for that man. The only driver to race in every NASCAR 
car Finney Series race since the series began. Remember back in 07 when he put it on the pole? That pole turned into the lead and lasted, what, a lap and a half before yeah. the track bar broke and took him out of contention. Well, he led for 18 laps a little bit earlier on in this race. He's had so many second place runs in 2017. But he's had a strong car on a lot of occasions. You hear him going into a, a final race and he'll be like, maybe this is the one. He feels good about it and then something will break or something will happen during the race. DJ Kennington out in front in this one. He should feel good about where that oval program is right now. He has shown a lot of speed. Battle for eighth position between the 18 and the, or sorry, the 95 and the 27. Anthony Simone and Andrew Ranger side by side. Let's listen. One quick burp of the throttle to get the car to rotate. See if he does it again. Now the car kind of wiggled. He didn't have any problem with it rotating them. You can see that quick stab of the throttle and then back on it again. It's just to get the car positioned to where it wants to drive off of the corner. Halfway, 100 laps down, 100 laps to go. Let's go pit side with Clinton. He's got a story on tire wear. One of the big stories here today is the new surface at Jacasa and what it would do to these Goodyear tires. We're taking a look here at the right side tires, fresh off the 95 of Anthony Simone. All the teams trying to figure out the best way to take care of these rubber tires. It, if that is a right front tire, and that's a 10-inch tire, they're not using the whole tire. So we talked about aggressive setups and why they'll blow right fronts. It looks to me like they got a lot of camber in these race cars. I, I don't know much, Dave, but you're trying to pick up little things that you see, and that's one of the things you would look at. You know what? You add in some of the right front brake heat that we've been seeing, some of these rotors glowing red hot, and that can also affect the tire wear. Battle for fifth between the 04 of Dumoulin and the Spectra Premium Dodge and the Pilati number 25 Ford of Larry Jackson. Alex Tagliani had thoughts of making it three wide. I'm no rocket scientist, but I don't think that's a good thought. <laughs> Not this. It's still pretty early in the race, just over halfway. But look at Caden Lapsovich. He's very, very quick. Still a lap down, though, in 15th spot. Well, and he wants to keep the pressure on. He wants to make sure he's the top car one lap down. But you don't want to race unnecessarily and use up your stuff when it's not for position. Well, here's the issue. The leader is going to start lapping more cars. So that's going to put other vehicles between you and that free pass position. And what we've seen in the last few races, yellow flags are not a guarantee. They can run long, long distances under green. Yeah, that's been, uh, caution flags have been a rarity in 2017, to say the least. Which is a, it's a good thing for the repair bills on these teams. I mean, the racing has been fantastic. There's been a lot of clean racing and a lot of excitement as well. Donald Teach currently in third spot, being hounded by the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. Out in front, though, is the Castrol Edge Dodge of DJ Kennington, just over halfway. Before the break, the number 22 Dodge of Donald Cheech was on a tear, and he managed to work his way around the 17 of DJ Kennington in the Pinty's Fall Brawl here at the 5 eighths of a mile to Casa Motor Speedway. So that makes the 22 of Cheech your new leader. 120 laps complete out of the 200 lap distance. Teach the leader. That puts DJ Kennington in that Castro Edge Dodge. Back to second. Some glowing front brakes on the 17 as well. We're starting to get a long green flag section as we continue our trip back through the top four cars. DJ Kennington sat on pole. He's currently in second spot, but a driver who's had to work up from his midway midfield starting spot is the Celtic Ford of Donald Chisholm. Chisholm running in the third position, giving that car a great drive tonight. Right behind him, the 74, the fierce Kevin Lacroix. And this is something we've seen all night long so far. The bumper-to-bumper -bumper dodge has moved up through the field. He's fallen back, but the ability to pass is there here at Jocasta Motor Speedway. It's wide open. You can pretty much do anything. His car seems, oh, yellow flag is out. Wow, Simone. Anthony Simone. Up in turn number two, and the back end of the innovative plumbing, Dodge Challenger crushed as he hammered the wall backwards. He was showing a little bit of smoke before this. Let's have a look. There's Anthony Simone with the green. Spoiler. Car gets loose up out of the groove. and The rear wheel 
wheels are still pointed in the right direction as the crew goes to work. Well, Mixed Motorsports has drawn an unlikely card here tonight. And with more, let's check in with Clinton. Two cars with problems in the pits here, the number nine of Adam Martin. They're working on the distributor, trying to get the spark and the ignition system back in line for him. And just behind him, Mark Dillian here, they're suffering problems with the right front shock. Tough night for two of the best here at Chukasa. Both Mark Dilley and Adam Martin looking for a great run, but the leaders will head down pit lane. DJ Kennington will be the first to hit pit road, and here comes Donald Chisholm. The 89 car down to get some fresh rubber. Right side tires going on that machine. Todd Lewis is in Kennington's pit. 17 car along pit road. They will change left side tires this time for fresh Goodyears. They will also have a look at the right side tires for DJ Kennington. They took them off after about 35 laps. They may go back on. That will give him fresher tires for the end of the race. And a quick look at the right front that came off Alex Tagliani as they rolled it away. Looked the same as the one they took off Anthony Simone's car. So the wear patch looks to be the same on all of these cars. Lightning quick pit stop for that 18, though. One driver who stayed out was your race leader. The 22 of Donald Teach out in front here at Jucasa Motor Speedway. Five drivers from the province of Quebec are getting ready to take the green here at Jucasa Motor Speedway. In the mix, the young man, Armani Williams from Gross Point, Michigan. And Armani Williams right at home on this fast speedway. We've talked about in this season, diagnosed on the spectrum with autism, raising awareness to show people what you can achieve. Being diagnosed on the spectrum, you can still achieve the things that you want to achieve. And here he is racing with some of the best drivers anywhere. Pleasant young man with a huge smile smile on his face all of the time and he struggles a little bit on this restart he'll fall back in that outside lane but we have a battle for the lead Lacroix on the outside will just dive back in line Donald Teach out in front but Lacroix did a nice job to maintain second and look who's back on the lead lap Caden Lapsovich in the 76. How about the brothers Dumoulin rubbing a little bit there They've raced hard, they raced hard at St. Eustache. They're racing hard here as well, Dave. You know what's funny is LP Dumoulin was here testing a little bit uh, earlier this week, or, or last week, I should say, along with his brother, the 04 of JF Dumoulin. JF had to leave for driving coaching duties, so LP jumped in the car and helped him with a setup, and now he's looking at the back end of the 04. Wow, beautiful. LP working on the back end of the 04 Dumoulin, but JF Dumoulin looking on the back end of Kevin Lacroix. That car is set up pretty well, Dave. I would say. How about DJ Kennington as we ride on board the Castrol Edge Dodge? That car, no car on the racetrack is hooking the bottom of the track as well as that 17. And here goes JF. Oh, it's going to be tight. JF Dumoulin carried a lot of speed into that corner, but he managed to stay off the bumper to bumper number 74. Of Lacroix, can he do it for two corners in a row? Might have touched him a little bit there. Did you see how hard the front tires turned on Jay? <laughs> I think they made contact. It knocked the tires to the right, turned it back to the left, and made the pass. LP Dumoulin fighting a little bit of a little loose race car, or he's fighting with the low Zappy Pen Dodge of Alex Dagliani, who's right on his bumper. It's like the Malachi Crunch. The two brothers doing action out here. <laughs> spots that just helped Kevin Lacroix maintain his position and here comes Caden. Do you see the two cars out of the DJK shop though? A little warning there the DJ Kennington was coming through but they stepped underneath the bumpers of the two cars in front of them did Andrew Ranger DJ Kennington and now both are clear all single file and Lapsovich manages to make his way underneath the low zip pen dodge of Tagliani as well. Side like Tagliani is. The next car back on the bottom has to overdrive that race car. Look at this three wide. Go high, go high, go high, go high. Go high, go high, go high. Alan Pinsno on the radio to Andrew Ranger telling him to go way high. And he did exactly that. And 
Ranger up in the outside lane again, and now Caden Lasovich will take on another fight. I see that. The 28, Armani Williams goes around by himself. Yellow flag is going to wave. I'm pretty sure there's got to be debris. Yes, the yellow lights are on. Armani Williams has shortened up that 28. Let's go on board. Martin Cote, the slower car on the inside. The field moved up. Noel Daller moved up to go around Cote. That put Armani Williams up into the marbles. And the race for autism, number 28, finds pit lane. He'll come to the attention of the CBRT crew. Another car on pit road is Tagliani. Yeah, guys, during this yellow flag, the 18 along pit road, they're going to have a look at the suspension. The hood's going to go up. They're having a look at it. They want to check and see if it's bent. They think they're okay after a quick inspection, but they're going to keep an eye on it for Alex Tagliani. You have the time. You might as well come down pit lane and check just to make sure. We're under caution for the third time this evening here in the Pinty's Fall Brawl, the season finale for the NASCAR Pinty's Series here at Jucasa Motor Speedway. Getting set for the fourth restart of the evening here in Nell's Corners, Ontario, not far from Hamilton as the 22 of Donald Teague will lead him back to green and head towards turn number one. J.F. Dumoulin on the outside of row one. That didn't get the best start. Falling back just a little bit, Dave. You know, we should mention that white number 22 of Donald Teach has been quietly dominant here today. It's, it's a very reminiscent of his car owner, Scott Steckley, and what he used to do in the NASCAR Pinty Series. He's gotten out by a couple of car lanes, and he really hasn't been challenged once he's gotten the lead. On board, now the Castrol Edge Dodge of DJ Kennington. He had thoughts of making it three wide. It's a battle for second and third spot, mostly third now as he pressures the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. Still working that inside right along the bottom of the racetrack. That car has just worked beautifully. Remember, that 76 of Caden Lapsovich is back on the lead lap, so he really liked seeing that last caution because it means he's back up in the mix. Ontario on the inside, Quebec up on the outside. Kennington and Lapsovich from Ontario. Lacroix and Dumoulin from Quebec. No, no, LP Dumoulin just gave, he's going back to the inside. He'll go with Ontario. <laughs> that's it. He's looking at the Ontario guys and he says, I think that's the way around. Donald Chisholm from Nova Scotia battling with Mississauga, Ontario's the number 25, Larry Jackson. Chisholm with the run on the inside, Jackson up on the high groove, and he's way up on the high groove between one and two. And look up a little bit further, battle for fourth between the 74 of Lacroix and the 76 of Caden Lapsovich. They're still side by side, just ahead of the WeatherTech.ca number 47 of LP Dumoulin. I just can't get over how deep the talent is in our field, Dave. These drivers are so good at what they do. It's just a joy to watch them race. So much parity in the NASCAR Pinty Series. You really don't know who is going to win when you take the green flag. And wow, Lacroix nearly had the wall there off of turn number four as he made contact with the 47 of LP Dumoulin. Here goes DJ Kennington to the inside of JF Dumoulin down into three. Dumoulin tries to close the door, slides oh. way up the racetrack. That was a huge slide. You saw him correcting. You saw those Goodyear Eagles pointed out towards the wall for a second as the Spectra Premium 04 gathered it back up. But he lost the all-important momentum. And it's so hard to get it back. You buzz the tires. So not only is the race car mad at you, the tires are hot, but it's hard to get your concentration back and get back into your rhythm. Looks like he's able to find a spot on the inside lane, tucking in behind the number 76 of Keaton Lapsovich from nearby Grimsby, Ontario. And now you have Donald Chisholm again in the Celtic Ford finding his feet. Remember, he made a pit stop, picked up some new right side Goodyear Eagles, and he's marching towards the front currently in sixth. Clayton Jeffrey in the pitch with the driver of the 0-2. Well, here with Mark Dilley. Mark. Obviously not how you wanted your return to Jocasta to get underway. Your car looks in one piece. What's the story here on the 02? It's got a really bad vibration. We can't find it. I think it's either in the motor or something in the drivetrain. I thought it was in the set of tires, but it's just, the, the, it's fine. I can hardly see when I'm driving it. So something's either gonna blow up or fall off it and wreck it. It's not worth it down this many laps. Mark Tilly has had a season to forget, Dave. He really, really has. Unfortunately.
fortunate for that team. They do work very, very hard. And the good folks from Leland, of course, with big support on that time on that team, along with Avenue Auto Parts supporting the 02 Ford Fusion of the Mixed Motorsports Stadium. Alex Tagliani has been working this move for a number of laps. That's a, now that's a beautiful bump and run. That, that's a short track move. Tickle the corner of the 25, up the track he goes, away goes Tagliani. You know what? The Tagliani from about five years ago, he would have stuffed it in hard, and we would have seen a car into the wall. Tagliani has learned. And what have you learned this year, Dave? What's the important part of the bump and run? It's the bump. It's the run. <laughs> Get the heck out of there. It was a 50-50 chance. Though. I thought so. I, I rolled the dice. It's obviously. all about the run. You make that bump. Hopefully you don't make the driver too mad, and then you get the heck out of there when it's over. I was thinking you didn't want to bump them too much, as we have a couple cars bumping or almost bumping the 89 of Donald Chisholm and the 47 of LP Dumoulin. There's JF Dumoulin still having a solid run. Not really known as an oval track driver coming into the NASCAR Pinty Series, but boy, is he ever making a name for himself today. You know, a, a great racer learns how to do it. And, and I'll tell you, JF is still terrible at practicing on an oval. <laughs> I mean, he is notoriously slow in practice. He doesn't qualify terribly well, but boy, oh boy, get to the race setup, and my goodness, that was close. But he really takes off with the race setup. Side by side, the 17 of DJ Cannington, the 76 of Caden Laksovich for second spot, and look at your race leader just ahead, the white number 22 of Donald Teach, heavy into lap traffic. He went three wide to the inside to go around the lap cars. Now Trevor Monaghan's going to be split. Didn't look like that was going to work, but Monaghan wisely backed off on corner entrance. Caden Laksovich lost his run on the Castro Dodge of DJ Kennington, but now he's just going to try and work his way through lap traffic, pinch it off on the inside, set sail down the back chute. Man, he oh, oh, contact! Big contact, around goes Kennington and into the wall! Caden had been working the inside corner time and time again. Boy, do I want another look at that one. Kennington has the car refired. See, there's a case where the bump might have been just a little bit too much, but the Castro Lynch Dodge is right and we're obviously under caution. Out of second spot, have another look at this now. Well, I'll tell you what one driver thinks, DJ Kennington, not a happy camper on pit road. 17 along pit road, and DJ Kennington motioning to the crew to have a look underneath at the suspension. He is not happy behind that wheel. This is as agitated as we've seen him in quite some time. He was hoping to have a little something at the end to fight for that victory. That was a battle for position and a battle for the points championship third place. Well, this really is turning into the fall brawl. We'll be back with more on TSN. With less than 15 laps to go here at the NASCAR Pinty Series finale at Chicasa Motor Speedway, tempers are heating up here in this fall brawl. Moments ago, DJ Kennington showed, let's say, displeasure with the Lapsovich group. up to the driver's door to get the inside lane. In the day of having spotters, it's not as clear as it used to be. Back to green now. You saw land rush start here on the front. Straight away, everybody gets sorted. We're side by side for the race lead. And look who's up on the outside. Caden Lapsovich, fresh off that contact with the 17 of Kennington. Great side by side battle for the lead. Lapsovich slides out in front with 10 laps to go. Lapsovich working the outside and making it stick. One of the only drivers to be able to do that here at Chukasa Motor Speedway. He'll nose into the lead, but Teach isn't done. Donald Teach down on that preferred inside groove. Oh, they came close to making contact. Teach is so hungry for a victory here in the NASCAR Pinty Series. He can taste it. Lapsovich tried to close the door, but I think he just over shot the turn. And look at Kevin LaCroix. He's battling as hard as he can to get up there and mix it up. The bumper to bumper Total Lubricants, number 74 of LaCroix holding down third spot. Looking a little bit deeper in the field. The 89 of Donald Chisholm, the 25 of Larry Jackson side by side. Oh, and Chisholm makes contact. Chisholm lost it, got into Jackson. Great save by Larry Jackson. That was a 
battle for six spot and now up the front the 74 and 47 make contact for third this is the second time the Balanchi crunch again <laughs> to jf dubelay right in there as well he was the man of the hour he took advantage of that incident with his brother and the specter of premium 04 moves up into fourth spot larry jackson fighting with donald chisholm jackson up high a little bit of brake smoke chisholm is sideways again boy none of these drivers willing to lift you see andrew ranger in the bull bar dodge up on the outside oh and he ran high into the marbles crossways for the 27. ranger is way off the pace lost all sorts of track position you saw some dust but it was just that he avoided the wall and we stay green back at the front of the field four laps to go this time and they cross the strike look at tj's car he's about a lane off the bottom of the racetrack that's not really the preferred groove Lapsovich trying to keep that momentum up, trying to get that car locked down, and look at the 04 of Dubois crossways as the 74 will get through, and now Jackson gets into the Spectra Premium Dodge. I cannot believe they're driving this 5 8 mile as though it's a little quarter mile bull ring. Tagliani and Donald Chisholm will join this little battle as they're still side by side. Smoke from the Pilotic Ford of the Larry Jackson car. The 25 of Larry Jackson now creating a lot. Tagliani and Chisholm. Tagliani up on the outside, though, able to make it work. Two laps to go this time by. Donald Teach continues to lead. Caden Lapsovich not too far behind, though. Noel Dowler in that five car closing in. He had a horrible restart. Fell back and then closed in. Look at Lapsovich almost close enough to make a move. One more lap to go here in the Pinty's Bowl Brawl at Ducasa Motor Speedway. Lapsovich with a great run off of turn number He'll look to the inside and then tuck back in line down the back straightaway. Half a car length. Can he make a move? He's going to force one. He gets into the back of Teach. Now he powers down the front chute and the win will go to Lapsovich. The crowd goes crazy as Lapsovich wins. LP Dumoulin third, Lacroix fourth, JF Dumoulin fifth. A bump and run for the win for the 2016 champion, Caden Lapsovich, a member of the NASCAR National group and have a look. And it's, it's how it is. It's not a clean move, but, but it's how NASCAR racing is these days. And I guess if you can do it without wrecking him. Good job for Donald Teach to hang on to it. He got up into the marbles and DJ Kennington is coming into victory lane with a full head of steam. Dan Hawkins there to make sure things don't get out of hand. Beautiful fireworks display over to Casa Motor Speedway. Fireworks on the front chute. We'll be back to wrap things up on the 2017 season. The fans treated to quite the light show here at Casa Motor Speedway. Ken Hill and Jerry Montour sure do know how to put on a show. And Dave, it wouldn't be the season finale if we didn't have confrontations after the race. Tony Spateri, it is aptly named the Fall Brawl. There's Jeff Lapsovich and Donald Teach sharing some pleasantries here on the front straightaway. Gaten Lapsovich with his third victory of the win, a hard-earned victory for the driver of the 76. It was hard-earned for sure. The crowd showing their appreciation for the fireworks show and for the for everything that's going on in the racetrack. And you can see Kenny Hill, the track owner, he's right down in the middle of it. He's enjoying it as well. Big smile on his face. Let's head down to victory lane with Todd. At the final race of 2017, the 2016 champion, Caden Lapsovich, climbs out of that car, triumphant in victory. Smile on his face, satisfactory. This has kind of been the year of the bump and run, and you kind of use that to score a victory here tonight. It was physical out there. It was. You know, I just did what everybody else was doing. I took a couple, and I gave a couple. Personally, I don't think I gave the bump to DJ like he thinks, but you know, whatever, it's racing. The 22 would have done it to me for a win, so proud of all my guys. They worked their tails off. This was a really tough race. Um, you know, we're thinking of Bob Slack right now. This is this one's for him and everybody that's helped us out this year. Uh, couldn't have gone out on a better win. Caden Lapsovich, a champion last year and a victorious conclusion to 2017. 
We're here with Donald Tease. Donald, you were in this battle all night. Talk about that last lap. You know, we got a guard to beat tonight, and uh, we were very fast, you know, all, all, the, all the, the 200 laps. But, you know, it's not fair what he did at the end, you know. He didn't break at all in the turn three, so he, he, he was breaking with my bumper. So I don't think it's fair that, that I don't, you know, I don't respect that. I, you know, I respect him, you know, I give him a lot of breaks in uh, Saskatoon and Edmonton, and he didn't, go, didn't, didn't give me my break tonight. I'll be back for him next year, just for him, just for him, you know. He did that to DJ tonight. He put him in the wall, and you know, the way you win tonight is not the way you have to win a race. Like when you got talent. You got to pass inside or outside. That's when you got talent. He's going to stay on the bottom all, all, all his life, believe me. Well, there you have the true emotions for driver the 22 here at the end of this one. Fired up Donald Siege makes me look forward to 2018, but let's take a look at the finishing order here today. Solid run for Kevin Lacroix, Larry Jackson inside the top 10 and seventh. Great run for Jackson. Chisholm faded a little bit at the end into the second 20. Brandon White with a solid 11th place finish on the lead lap. Brad Graham in that Jim Bray number 56 in 12th. Let's go down to your third place finisher. LP, what a job by this team. A motor change after practice. You battle back and get a podium finish. Way to go. Demand competition. WeatherTech 47 Benmar car was awesome tonight. Uh, we had to work really hard to bring it back up front. Our last couple of laps, we fought really hard with a 74. And you know what? I mean, we're really happy with this result. My guys worked so hard all afternoon long. Started from last to third. It's awesome. Great job, my brother, with, you know, with a spec per premium car. Awesome. Caden Lapsovich on the podium with... Ken Hill, there is Tony Spiteri from Pinty's. A hard-earned celebration, and Dave, you can't disagree with what Donald Teach had to say, but there's something to be said for someone who's racing for the money. While we were finishing that race, the 32 team rolled out the backup car, prepared for donuts and a celebration so they could come out here in victory lane and be crowned champions for 2017 the right way. I have a feeling Alex LeBay is about to light up the front stretch. Well, he got that Pinty's flag well stopped on the back straight away. He makes his way down the front shoot. Look at the crews, some fans there as well, and here he goes, some victory donuts for your 2017 champion. It's a thing of beauty, and what a championship season. Up until tonight, it was an unblemished record. Man, that was a nice parking job too, Dave. <laughs> he finished it off right, didn't he? Alex LeBay rolling into the victory lane area. His crew ready to celebrate as he hops out of the car. A champion. Standing tall on the driver's window. He earned it with success on the road courses and success on the ovals. Alex, let's talk about your day here. What a wild night for you. A bit of action. Obviously, you would have liked things to go a bit differently here, but you're still the champion. You got a good view of the fireworks tonight. Talk about your evening. Yeah, it was a pretty rough night for us. I mean, we had a really good car. Oh, my, my, my cam crew prepared me a really fast car here. I don't know what happened there. I think we had a slow leak in our right front and uh, punctured the right front tire and hit the wall. So just ru ruined our race. But, uh, no, it's part of the game. We came here and we had a, we were the strongest all year long. So uh, still sealed the deal. That was a goal coming in the season, getting the championship. So it's, uh, it's done. What does it mean to you to be the NASCAR Pinty Series champion here for 2017? Oh, it means a lot. I mean, it's... Uh, it's a really good team effort. I'm really proud of all my guys. We made a, a lot of big changes this uh, half season, and I'm just proud of everyone. I think, uh, that, like I said, it was a mindset coming in the year, and uh, it's a goal. It's a, it's pretty much a dream come true. I've been uh, dreaming all my life to, be, to become a national NASCAR champion, so it uh, feels awesome here tonight. Congratulations. There is, ladies and gentlemen, your 2017 NASCAR Pinty Series champion, Alex LeBay. And there's his girlfriend, Valerie. You see Mario Gosselin just in behind his second Pinty Series championship. Caden Lapsovich, third place in points. We saw how upset DJ Kennington was. He fell back to fifth. LP Dumoulin sneaks in for fourth. Solid season for the 04 of JF Dumoulin coming home eighth, and Clinton's with the ninth place finisher in points. Well, we're here with Adam Martin, our Jostens rookie of the year for 2017. Adam, great season for you, your first full year. Yeah, it was a good season for us overall. You know, we had a bit of bad luck here tonight, but, you know, it was a good season, and, uh, Happy to uh, take the Rookie of the Year champion. Well, get on it. Pull that rookie stripe off. You'll be a veteran next season. This is the moment that all rookies look forward to, taking that yellow stripe off the back bumper of the car.
All smiles is Adam Martin, so is Alex LeBay as he poses with the championship trophy with Bob Duvall from NASCAR. Don't drop it, Alex. <laughs> Big smiles all around. Holding that trophy high, look at the crew behind him. It is definitely a team effort. This NASCAR on TSN telecast has been brought to you by E3 Spark Plugs, Born to Burn. By Leland Industries, a proud Canadian fastener company. And by Honey Goo from Clean Flow on Honey of a Lube. Big congratulations to Elaine Bernier, Dave Jacobs, Mario Goslin, Randy Smith, and the entire Go Fast Racing team for their first NASCAR championship. Well, Ken Hill and Jerry Montour hosted one heck of a season ending party. The Pinty's Fall Brawl was just that. It lived up to its hype. The old crown jewel was sparkling and put on quite the show for these great NASCAR fans. Donald Teach was strong, but Caden Lasovich muscled his way to the checkered flag. The 17-year-old from Grimsby, Ontario, enjoyed his confetti shower, his third of the year. And then, Dave, it was Alex LeBay's turn to join in the fun. This young man's consistent run padded a championship run coming into the finale. The entire Can-Am Go Fast crew spraying the champagne in victory lane. Thanks to Adam Ross, Todd Lewis, and Clinton Jeffrey on behalf of Steve Ryan, Jim, and Joel Robinson, and our entire NASCAR on TSN crew, we thank you for watching, and congratulations to Alex LeBay, your 2017 champion. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast.